If you're interested in learning how to knit, I'm sure you've done a little shopping around to see what kind of things you need to get in order to be successful. And while there are a few things you do need, obviously you need yarn and knitting needles, there are a lot of things you don't need. And even with the yarn and knitting needles, what kind of knitting needles should you get? There are a lot of different kinds. I've been knitting for most of my life and I've been through a lot of knitting things. <laughs> but I started working my way towards minimalism a few years ago, so I've been able to narrow down what I think are the six most essential knitting tools for beginners. But a few of them I think you might already have around the house, so don't run off to buy everything just yet. Let me show you what everything is. First things first, let me explain what it is that you're looking at. So I like to use interchangeable circular knitting needles, even though it's a mouthful to say. I prefer them over straight needles these days because while straight needles are good and fine, uh, circular needles can do the same thing as straight needles, but straight needles cannot do everything that circular needles can. What I mean by that is when you have a straight needle, say if it's this long, you can knit something that's about that wide, maybe a little bit more, but not a whole lot. And if you want to do any larger projects, which you probably will one day as you get more confident, you'll use a circular needle. So the way these work as interchangeable needles is you take two of these tips, they fasten to either end of the cable, and the interchangeable kits come with different length cables for different needs. And they function the same way as straight needles, except that instead of your project going off straight to one side, it will go here. You can either knit in the round or you can knit back and forth. Don't worry about that yet if you don't know what that means. But that's why I like these, because they can do both. And rather than buying all of the straight needles and then all of the circular needles, I tell all of my students to just go ahead and get the interchangeable kit. I have had this set for at least 10 years and obviously I use it all the time. These, these are getting a little bit worn out, but they still work great. Next up is stitch markers. Now these, they all look different, but they're all stitch markers. I actually don't like these as much and I wanted to show them to you just to explain why. They're kind of thick and so as I'm knitting, if I'm knitting at a smaller gauge, so with thinner yarn and needles, this actually can get in the way and leave a bit of a gap between stitches. So I don't want you to get this kind. Same with these. They're skinny, but they have a little too much width that way. So I don't like these a whole lot either. Both of these I do like. I obviously have lost <laughs> all of my good ones because I use them too much. I like this kind because it also serves as a safety pin. Dual functions, always a plus, right? So stitch markers can be used on your knitting needles to mark a place in your work. It sits right in between the stitches like that, and it's a really handy tool. This one is nice, like I said, because it serves as both a safety pin, so you can mark a place on your fabric, or it can be a stitch marker. And these are nice too, there's all different sizes of these. This one is too small for this needle. The only problem with these is that sometimes this little seam in the metal catches on my yarn and so that kind of bugs me. So again, this is a winner. I link to a set um, that has several of these and a couple different sizes of a plain ring. The next thing you'll need is a ruler. Now, you probably already have a ruler, so don't feel like you have to go out and buy another one, but I like rulers with these holes for measuring what size knitting needle you have. And that comes in handy because these, even though they're color-coded, they're not marked with what size they are. So a lot of the times I forget, or I just wanna check and make sure I have the right one. Flip it over to this side. So the way this little checker works is the smallest hole that the needle can be inserted through is the size that it is. So this one is size 11, or you can see here um, in the UK and most other places they measure them in millimeter. So this is an eight millimeter diameter US size 11 needle. 
Um, I don't actually remember where I got this. I've had it a very long time. So I'm linking to a different one that's more of a square shape that can also be used for measuring your gauge, which if you haven't learned how to knit yet, you will learn about gauge. But this does work for that too, so I just keep using it. Next up is the tape measure. Now you may think it's strange that I'm telling you about two separate measuring devices. Um, and if you don't feel like you need the needle checker and you want to get just one, I would say get a tape measure. Uh, this guy, it's not super cute, but it gets the job done. And you may already have one of these also. What you use the tape measure for that's different from a flat ruler is you can measure your body and you can measure curved parts of what you're knitting and longer distance, all of that. I kind of wish that I had a retractable tape measure so I don't have to do this all of the time. So that's what I am directing you to in my list that I've made. You will probably need a tapestry needle. I used to get just the cheapy plastic ones, but they would break on me. Um, so I started getting metal ones and they're really not expensive. This, I've lost all the others. This is the last remaining one I have out of the set, so I need to order a new one. But it came with a few different sizes and it has a large eye that you can thread yarn through and you'll use these for either sewing pieces together or weaving in Very ends important. to finish. And then scissors. I'm sure you already have some scissors at your house and it's not like fabric cutting where you need to have a really fancy pair of shears but it does help to have a small sharp pair of scissors to keep in your knitting bag. I've had these even before I learned how to knit, <laughs> so really, really long time. They are Fiskars and they're just as sharp as they were the day I bought them. I don't know, probably 25 years ago. I guess my mom would have bought them if it was that long ago, <laughs> but they're great little scissors. So if you don't have a pair that would work, go ahead and get these and that is all. Like I said, go ahead and see what you have in your house already that could work for you off of that list. And for the rest, I will send you a free PDF with clickable links to take you directly to all of the things I talked about so that you don't have to waste any more of your time hunting around. And if you need any help actually learning how to knit, go ahead and check out my online course, Knitting Day View, and I'll walk you through everything you need to know to set you up for success.